One evening, when I was a junior in high school, my mom and dad went out, leaving me home alone. I had a lot of homework to do, so I spent the whole evening sitting at my desk in my bedroom. My parents left the house around 6 p.m. While I was doing homework, I put my headphones on and listened to loud music. There was a storm that night, and my desk was facing the window, so I could see the rain and the lightning outside. My parents came home around 11 p.m. When I saw their car drive up, I took off my headphones. As soon as my mom opened the front door and came inside, I heard her shout my name. What on earth happened here? She demanded in an angry voice. Confused, I ran downstairs. My mom was standing in the hallway with a furious look on her face. She pointed at the floor and yelled, Was this you? I looked down and saw the carpet was covered in muddy footprints. I have no idea how those got there. I spent the whole night at my desk doing my homework. I watched as her face changed from anger to confusion and then to fear. We both realized at the same time someone must have been in the house. We followed the trail of footprints trying to make sense of the whole situation. They started out the back door which we usually leave unlocked. Then we noticed something else. The footprints started at the back door but there is no trail of the footprints going back through that door. All of a sudden, we hear a loud, pounding noise that echoed throughout the house, then the sound of the front door being wrenched open and slamming shut. We all ran into the garage and locked the door behind us. My mom took out her cell phone and called the police. Please come quickly. There's someone in our house. After what seemed like hours, a patrol car arrived with two police officers, a male and a female. One of the officers stayed with us in the garage, while his partner went through the house, searching it room by room. When she came back, the female officer told us that there was no one in the house, and it was safe to go back in. As we were all breathing a sigh of relief, she asked, Whose bedroom is upstairs on the left? My parents looked at me. It's mine, I told the officer. She asked me to follow her. As we walked through the house, We could see the trail of the muddy footprints leading from the back door, through the living room, through the hallway and up the stairs, into my parents' bedroom and towards my room. They stopped at my doorway. The female officer pointed at the door, which had been open the whole night. Scrawled on it in blue marker was the following. 847, I see you. 853, You forgot to lock your back door. 8.59. You seem focused. 9.27. Turn around. 9.47. Look at me. 10.15. Look at me. 10.37. Look at me. 10.49. Look at me. For more than two hours, someone had been standing in my doorway, watching me. To this day, I still shudder to think of what would have happened if I would have turned around. This happened several years ago when I lived with my ex-boyfriend. We recently moved into a two-bedroom house and set to work turning it into a home. We turned the back bedroom into an office as the house only had one bathroom and it could only be reached through that bedroom. We would have people crash on our sofa regularly and didn't fancy them having to trapeze through our bedroom to get to the loo in the middle of the night. So we had been living there roughly a month when this event occurred. My ex was out with his colleagues and I was home alone. I had spent the early evening watching TV and eating takeout. A couple times I heard some strange noises, but whenever I would try to zone in on it and figure out what the hell it was, it would stop. It had got later. So I decided to go upstairs and use the computer for a little bit before going to bed. At this point in time, we hadn't had our phone lines installed. And I was still on a pay and go phone, which had run out of credit. I basically had no way to communicate with anyone while I was in the house that night. So I'm sitting in the back room with only a small table lamp that barely forms a glow. While I'm typing away on the laptop, I heard the noises again. It started as a light rattling noise, really faint to the point where I had to strain to see if I was really hearing it or if I was imagining it. 
I shut the music off and tried to figure out what it was. I went into our bedroom and looked down to our front door. Nobody's there. I go back into the back bedroom but can't see much out that window. We had a small yard with a high brick wall and I saw a wooden gate with nothing to cast any light. From what little I could see, there was nothing in the back either. I sat back down and switched the music back on. Maybe 10 minutes later I hear an eerie screeching sound, like metal on metal. Again, very faint, as if whatever was making it was trying desperately to be quiet. I was getting more than a little freaked out at this point, so I went out of our bedroom to retrieve a heavy iron rod that we had found in the back of the built-in wardrobe. I didn't switch on any lights as I didn't know what was going on and I didn't want to alert any possible intruders of my location in the house. Remember, I had no way of calling anyone and I was getting more than a little concerned that someone might actually be in my house. I made my way back into the office bedroom and closed the door as quietly as possible before bolting and lodging the chair under the handle. Nothing more happens for a good 20 minutes or so. I start feeling a little foolish for letting myself get worked up and put it down as being my first night alone in the house. But I don't switch the music back on this time, which was lucky because I started to hear sounds like two people whispering, both male voices. They didn't sound like they were coming from inside the house though. I had the office window open ever so slightly and the sound seemed to be floating in from there. I headed into the bathroom to see if I could get a better look into the alley that the house backs into. The office bedroom and the bathroom formed a L around a yard with the bathroom extending further out. I climbed up on the ledge and inched the window open trying to see out into the alley. I couldn't see anything but the whispering was louder and coming directly behind the gate. I couldn't hear the whole sentences but I heard enough to summarize whoever these men were they'd seen us move in and seen that we had quite a lot of valuable equipment, guitars, computer, my DSLR, TV, gaming consoles, etc. I imagine they'd seen that I was home alone and had been waiting for me to go to sleep before trying to get into the house. I stayed perched there for what felt like an eternity until what seemed like the loudest thud in the world echoed up to me. They'd grown tired of trying to be stealthy and one or both of them were throwing themselves into the gate trying to break it down. I could see it shuddering under the blows and could only imagine how large these men must be. I'm a teeny girl all about 5'3", and at that point weighed somewhere around 105 pounds. I was white with terror as I watched the gate groan under the stress. I sat clutching the iron rod, trying to think where I could hide from them. Suddenly, a glaring light behind me. At first I panicked and dropped out of sight, thinking they were shining a torch at the back of the house. But then I heard barking and shouting. I peeked again and saw that the house, which was across the alley from us, had a floodlight installed and it was illuminating both their own yard, mine, and the alley with light. I heard grumbling and cursing and two sets of footsteps hurrying down the alley. I stayed locked in the bathroom until my ex-boyfriend drunkly rolled in at 4 a.m. I didn't sleep a wink that night and when I went out into the yard that morning, my gate was hanging on by one hinge, allowing easy access from the alley. When I looked at the back of it, the keyhole was covered in scratches as if someone tried to force open the lock. If they hadn't woken the house behind us, I dread to think what could have happened. I live in a fairly rural town in northeast of England. It is surrounded by countryside and smaller villages. Because of this, there is very little serious crime. Worst thing that had happened that I can remember was a stabbing around eight years ago. And in more recent years, a friend of mine got the crap kicked out of him because he was drunk and two teenagers were looking for a punching bag. He came out with a bunch of bruises, but otherwise was fine. This is just to give you a sense of the place I live so you can understand the situation a little better. I live right next to a bad part of town, the part where the majority of crimes happened. There was even one bloke that dumped a half a rabbit on a doorstep of a corner shop as a prank. So it's a pretty rough area. Anyway. The downside of living next to this area is that you hear a lot of noises during the night. Having lived in the city for three years while going to university, I got used to the constant noise, the sirens, the traffic, so when I finally got home to the comparatively quiet town, it took me a long time to readjust, which meant I would hear a lot of strange things, and on occasion, saw things far stranger. 
So with my difficulty falling asleep for the first few nights, I lay in bed, hopelessly trying to sleep. I should explain that there are four typical noises that I hear in my town. The clock bell ringing every quarter hour, teenagers thinking that they are cool, blasting music past their bedtime on their way home, teenagers in general being loud, and drunks. While falling asleep, while failing to get to sleep, I hear voices. I take a look out the window and watch these people walk past. Pretty standard. Next, a drunk shouting about how he's gonna clock someone's head in. And then finally, just before I went to sleep, a random guy walking home alone, presumably after having a couple drinks himself. A few more days go by with more noises, but then I heard a scream. It sounded like it was coming from a little girl. She sounded upset like her mom scolded her for something. I then heard shouting and the screaming continued. Then both trailed off and then stopped. I suspected that it was just a really tired child whose irresponsible parents had kept them out too long. It wouldn't be the first time I heard something like this while being there. So I continued on, night after night, trying to sleep. Nothing interesting truly starts until about a week later. I was playing Sims 4 at about 1.30 a.m. and I hear a guttural scream, but I can't figure out where it's coming from. The sound was either reverberating too bad, or it was at the road adjacent behind the houses in front of my own. Either way, I lost interest in the screaming and it stopped after a couple seconds and I still couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Two nights pass. Once again, I'm playing Sims 4 and I hear the screaming, this time much closer. Close enough that I should be able to see it if it weren't nighttime. We don't have a lot of street lights on our street, maybe one or two. There's a good 20 meters or so between street lights where it's pitch black darkness. I'm looking and trying to see things the best I could, but it was no good. Which brings me to day. I was climbing into bed and I hear a bike ride past. I take a quick look out of my window and I didn't see any signs of a bike anywhere. But while staring out the window, I see a man step out from the darkness in the middle of the road. He looks like he's just walking down the road, and I don't think there's an issue, until he steps right in front of my house. I quickly turn off my lamp and hide out of sight. The street lamp I mentioned earlier is directly opposite of my house, so the light shines directly into my room. So watching from the darkness isn't an option for me, but it heavily silhouettes anyone not facing it. As I lean to see if he's gone yet, to my horror, I see him at my garden fence, and I can only presume he's looking directly at my window. I panic and take cover again, listening carefully for footsteps that would indicate that he had left. After about five minutes or so, I hear them, but to my terror, it sounds like he's walking up the steps into my garden. I'm too scared to look. But after mustering up enough courage and strategy to keep myself in the dark, I do. He wasn't there, but I know what I heard. Three footsteps towards the entrance of my garden, four steps up the stairs, and finally three steps to the left onto the gravel. And yet, he was gone. No sounds of gravel or footsteps. I waited a couple more minutes, but I haven't heard any noises from within my house. We have a one-year-old, very excitable dog named Dana that would bark the roof off of the place if he came through the back. And I would hear him coming through the front because I'm directly over the two entrances. And I would hear him breaking the window or door. So I'm sure that he's gone, but I can't help but feel he may pay my house more visits. This story happened a year ago. I was living with my then boyfriend, now fiance. Anyways, we lived in a townhouse in the suburbs. Pretty safe area. There had been some robberies a couple blocks away, but they weren't common, and I felt pretty safe walking home alone at night. So one weekend, my boyfriend's brother Marshall and his girlfriend Amy and her brother Curtis were visiting. We were all just gonna chill and have a couple of drinks and play video games and relax. My boyfriend had his LSATs, and after a couple of months of studying, he wanted to just relax before the exam. Unfortunately, I ended up getting very sick. It was the worst flu I've ever had. Extreme fever, one degree higher than I would have had to go to the hospital. I had nausea, headache, body aches, and all that good stuff. 
Of course, I didn't want that to stop my friends from having a good time, so they came over anyways, and I just stayed in my room. They went out to eat before they came over, so I was in bed alone watching TV. Felt like I was dying. I slept on and off. At about 4 p.m., I heard the door open and figured they were back, but when I called out for my boyfriend, no one came up. Even if he was there, he probably wouldn't have heard me, but I knew he would come and check on me as soon as he came back. So I assumed I heard something fall or the neighbors making noises. So I dismissed it and went back to sleep. I was in a deep sleep and groggily opened my eyes and thought I saw a figure move across my room. I was so heavily medicated and so sick I didn't fully understand what had happened and what that meant. Like I saw a figure but didn't connect in my brain that I might have seen someone since it was pretty dark in my room. I think part of me thought it was just the TV. Finally, around 7pm everyone comes back. They were loud. Amy, my boyfriend's brother's girlfriend, was tipsy. She's very fun when she's drunk, so there's a lot of laughter. My boyfriend comes in to check on me. He brought me some soup. He sat and talked about his day as I ate. I asked him to look in the basket under the bed to get a new bottle of aspirin. We had a full-size bed, and I had a basket under the bed where I kept extra pill bottles, shaving cream, and stuff like that. I didn't know right away, but thank God he looked under the bed. He put his head up and handed me the aspirin, but his facial expression had changed like he had lost color in his face. I didn't think much of it and said thank you. Come on, I'm gonna take you to the bathroom. He never stutters like that, but I remember picking up on it. I told him no, I didn't really have to pee and I didn't feel like getting up. He said, no, let's go. I don't wanna have to climb up the stairs just because you need to pee in 10 minutes. I remember feeling hurt by his words, but I knew he was right since I just had soup and half a bottle of water. He walked me downstairs and I couldn't understand why he didn't just use the upstairs bathroom. I think I was so sick I felt too exhausted to question. He sat me down on the couch. What's going on? I practically whispered this. He took out his phone and his hand was shaking. I asked him what was wrong and I'll never forget how my heart sank and I felt like I couldn't breathe when he whispered, there's someone under the bed. Amy laughed, so I laughed, thinking it was a prank, but it felt serious. My boyfriend's brother suggested we get out of the house, so we did. As we were leaving, we heard a thud upstairs. We quickly left and drove away, then called the police. The police came and searched the house and didn't find anyone. He must have known we suspected he was there and left. My boyfriend couldn't give a description. He only saw sneakers, but it was so dark he couldn't really see anything. The scariest thing still leaves me on edge that the police found a knife under the bed. It was a small steak knife, but very dull and rusty. There weren't any killings in the area, so my friends assumed he just wanted a place to sleep. I'm not really sure how he got into our place, but I have some theories. I'm really proud of how my boyfriend handled everything. He's a calm and collected person, but I always assumed he wouldn't be that way in a crisis. I just hope I never see this person again, ever. I live in a fairly secure area and have two dogs, one of which is a large Doberman and the other is a poodle. I was home alone as my parents were out for the weekend. Our dogs bark a lot as they are protective and our neighbors really hated when the dogs barked and we would often get notes telling us to keep our dogs quiet. One of the more threatening ones was that they would hurt our dog if we wouldn't keep quiet. So my parents had taken the dogs to a dog kennel to avoid any complications. I was home alone playing video games and watching movies for the weekend. It was the night after they had left and I was playing a video game. I think it was Rainbow Six. I was playing with a few friends online and I had a microphone. I had my window open while I was playing and my friends kept telling me to stop making that squeaky sound. I questioned what they meant and my friends said they heard a loud banging. I removed my headphones and that's when I heard the sound of something slamming against the gate. I peered out my window and saw a tall stocky man with a black hoodie on. I decided to call 911, still watching the man from the window. I was talking to the 911 operator and they told me to lock myself in a room, get out of sight and the police officer was on their way to check it out. But I was overly curious and it got the best of me. So I decided to keep watching the man. 
He finally broke the wooden gate off the hinges, but he didn't enter. He just stood there with something strapped around his shoulder. Upon further inspection, only from the moonlight, I saw it was a hunting rifle. That's when I decided to hide under the bed and listen out for anything. It was quiet, too quiet. A loud shatter broke the silence, which was a back door smashed and footsteps following. The intruder entered my house and it sounded like he was searching for something. He slowly crept up the stairs. I was getting more and more scared. All of a sudden, I heard a police siren and I made a stupid decision of bolting and trying to escape the house. I started down the stairs and turned the corner and was greeted by the large man. The man grabbed me by the neck and all I could hear was the police sirens getting louder. The police were knocking on the door and I was quickly losing breath from the man's grip. The man let go and I was able to grab his rifle and aimed it at him. I pulled the trigger but nothing. It didn't fire because I'm a dumbass and the safety was on. But the police shortly kicked down the door and tased the man. The man was found and charged for breaking and entering and carrying an unlicensed firearm. I'm thankful for my safety and I know everything could have ended very badly. I used to live in a town in North Texas on the border of Oklahoma and in this particular town there's a lot of rundown areas. So back when I was 20 I was living in one of these areas in an old apartment complex with my girlfriend at the time. So long story short the area is known for a pretty big bit of crime and having lived in Oak Cliff known as the really bad part of downtown Dallas I wasn't too worried about it. One night I was off work and I had been reading the book Shotgun for a while in the living room. After about a good two or three hours of reading, I realized I had to go to the bathroom. I put the book down and got up to walk to the back of the apartment, which has two rooms and a bathroom. The moment I get to the entryway of the hallway, I notice muddy shoe prints on the floor facing the living room where I had just been laying down on the floor reading. Immediately, I get into alert mode and get against the wall because I'm assuming this guy or girl is still in my apartment. I follow these footsteps back to my bedroom, which is just a small room with one window on a brick wall near the top of my bed. And I notice that the footprints come from and lead back to the window across my bed. For a long time I pace through my house searching for the person and not once can I find anyone, which is probably the thing that creeped me out the most because the only way in or out of the apartment is through the front door in the living room where I was laying on the floor. The even weirder thing was, and I know this isn't going to sound legit, is that I had a big throw blanket folded and tucked up over my window that was pushed back in place in front of the locked window. Someone had to have opened the window, climbed inside to make their way into the apartment, walk all the way to the end of the hall, and notice me there. At the time I was a pretty built guy, but laying on the floor the way I was, I had my back to the hallway. I couldn't sleep for weeks. And even though my girlfriend was worried about it, she hadn't been there when it happened. So after a while, she got annoyed by my nervousness and suggested we move. After a few years, I got over it. But sometimes I catch myself wondering why he didn't go any further or how the hell he broke in in the first place. This happened well over 10 years ago. So I'll try my best to describe the events accurately. One of my childhood homes had a balcony that was attached to both my mother's bedroom and mine via a big double glass door in each of our rooms. Next to the balcony were two trees, one I would often climb up and down from my balcony. This balcony faced out towards the streets. One night when I was 13, my brother and mother weren't home. I was reading in bed with a very dim reading light. I heard what sounded like something moving in one of the trees outside, but it didn't worry me because possum and bats are common in our area. Now I had thin curtains on the glass doors that separate my room and the balcony. As I mentioned previously, the doors faced out towards the street where the street lamp light was always visible through my curtains. Shortly after hearing the rustling noises from the tree, I see a shadow slowly move past my doors. 
At which point, I immediately turn off my reading light and freeze like a deer in headlights. The shadow was tall, so it wasn't one of our neighborhood kids that I'm friends with, and it wasn't my mother, which is five feet tall. The person moved slowly, creeping as if they were trying not to be noticed. They wouldn't likely be able to see into my room, but I could see them thanks to the streetlights behind them, creating a dark silhouette. They moved past my doors and out of sight. I sat there, unable to move or even think about what to do, other than being absolutely still. That is until I heard another sound, the sound of someone trying to open the glass door, my mom's doors, to the balcony. I didn't know if she had locked them or not, and I wasn't taking any chances. I moved as quickly and as silently as I could to my bedroom door and locked it. I listened for what the person was doing now. They were still jiggling the glass door handle, but it sounded like the doors weren't opening. I felt relief. This person couldn't get in, surely. All I had to do was wait for them to realize that, and then they would leave, right? Well, I heard light footsteps moving back along the balcony to my set of glass doors until I saw his shadow stop directly in front of them. Again, I froze. He couldn't see me. He couldn't know that I see him. I saw the shadow of a hand reach up to the door handle, and my heart stopped. Had I actually locked these doors myself today? I was out there earlier. What if I forgot? The seconds leading up to him grabbing the handle felt like an eternity, but thankfully, when this person tried to open the door, it did not open. It was locked. I sighed such a sigh of relief. I was worried that he had heard it. After this, he began pacing the length of the balcony. I didn't have a mobile phone, as my mom thought I was too young to have one yet, and the landline was on the other end of our house. But I was too scared to take my eyes off this person, even to call for help. I was slightly crying, tears falling down my cheeks, as I internally prayed that they would just leave. Then I heard him stop moving. He then said, I could just break the glass, you know. Before I could even process this, I saw a car headlights turn around the corner of my street, then stop at our property gate. My mom was home. The person moved out of sight and I heard a loud thump as they jumped off of it. My mom came inside and I was hysterical and barely coherent in telling her what just happened. Eventually I got the message across and she called the police. They never found or caught anyone. But my neighborhood reported a truck in the street that matched the description of a truck that had been recently reported for attempting to abduct a child near my school a block away. Since I walked a short distance daily, the police suspected that he followed me or saw where I lived and waited for me to be home alone. I'm an insomniac. And it mostly sucks, but one summer night, insomnia most certainly saved my life. It was around 3 a.m. I was 18 at the time, and home alone. I went to bed at 12.30. So not only was I pissed that I couldn't sleep, but I was also getting bored. So I thought I would just get up and watch a movie or something, and hope that I would feel tired soon enough, or at least entertain myself for a bit, and time would go faster. When I got out of my bed, I heard a noise coming from my bedroom window. It sounded like something scraping against the metal frame. I went to go pull up the blind to see if there was something there. And just before I could, I heard a click coming from the window. I knew that sound. It was the sound that my window made when I unlocked it. I felt my heart skip a beat, and I couldn't describe how much fear I was in at that moment. I knew that it wasn't something, but someone at my window. While I was frozen in fear, I heard my window slowly and gently slide open. I felt a mix of fear and rage. Someone was breaking into my house, into my room. I had a sword collection on my wall, and I took the sharpest one and made the blade pass through one of the slides of the blind where someone would have been in order to open the window. I felt that I hit something with my blade, and I heard a short scream of pain. I took a step back and was gonna hit again when I heard footsteps running away towards the street. My sword still in hand, I pull up the blinds and there was no one there now. I close my window and block it off so it couldn't be opened again. With the adrenaline still rushing, I took my phone and called the police while keeping one eye on my window and another on the tip of my sword where I could see blood. The police arrived soon after and nothing else happened since. The intruder was never found 
So whoever tried to climb into my room in the middle of the night, let's not meet. I want to preface the story by stating that I've had my fair share with creepy men. This situation, however, scared the life out of me. It's the first time I generally felt like my life was in danger. My husband and I had to drive 17 hours last week to North Carolina for a wedding. It was an exhausting week, and we basically spent the entire time rushing from one family gathering to another. We were staying in a motel for the time that we were there. We had already been at the motel for a few days by the time the actual wedding rolled around. The day of the wedding was hectic. We were rushing around trying to get ready to leave for the venue. My husband got ready before me so he could do some last minute things before we had to leave. That left me alone in the motel room to get ready before he returned. It was brutally hot outside and I decided to do my hair and makeup in just my underwear so I wouldn't be sweating in my nice dress the whole time. When the motel was laid out, the sink and mirror were in the general open area of the room with the toilet and shower in another room. So anyone walking by our window could see me standing at the mirror. However, I did have the curtains closed, but these curtains were a little bit sheer. So you could technically see a shadow of someone walking by outside or could maybe see a silhouette of me inside the room. I was curling my hair in the mirror when I noticed a silhouette of a man walking by my room. As he passed my window, I see him stop and start trying to look into my window. At first I thought it was my husband trying to see if I was ready, so I paid no mind to it. But the longer the guy stood there, bobbing his head around trying to get a better look through the curtains, I began to realize it was not my husband, because obviously he would have just came in. Now I'm starting to freak out a bit. Before I could do anything though, I watch as this guy start to go for the room door. My utter shock and horror came true when he was actually able to open the door and walked inside. Before my husband left, he forgot to pull the door shut all the way till it clicked into lock. So now I'm face to face with this man, and I'm in my underwear no less. He was at least six feet tall and standing in my room. I thought to myself, this is it, he's gonna attack you. That was a very scary realization to have. I also thought to myself, you're gonna have to burn out his eye socket with this curling iron if you wanna survive. For a few seconds, probably only a second or two, but it felt a lot longer. He just stood there staring at me like I was a piece of meat and he was starving, ready to pounce on me like I'm prey. Then he began to smile with the most evil looking toothy grin I've ever seen and started mumbling something under his breath I couldn't make out what he was saying completely, but I did make out the words, pretty lady, and come here. I don't know if it was a fight or flight response, but I suddenly got pissed. I charged towards him, ready to strike him with a hot curling iron. I screamed as loud as I could, get the hell out of here. It must have startled him because he jumped back out onto the balcony and out of the motel. I saw this as my chance and ran to the door. I luckily was able to get to the door and slam it shut right before he was about to make a second attempt at entering. I immediately collapsed to the floor, sobbing. I literally was too scared to move from the spot until my husband came back 15 minutes later. I told him the whole thing and he was freaked out. He initially wanted to find this guy so he could beat the crap out of him, but I refused to let him leave my side. He apologized to me a thousand times during the rest of our trip for not making sure the door was locked before leaving. But I told him that that day was so rushed that I could see how it happened. We went to hotel management and told him the whole story. The police were obviously called and I gave the description of the guy so they could see if it was someone that was staying at the motel. After going around to a few motel occupants, they said that there was no match of his description, concluded that he wasn't staying there. Obviously we were late to the wedding that day. The whole experience just ruined what should have been a happy time. We planned on staying another day before a long drive home, but both of us just wanted to get out of there as soon as possible. We skipped most of the reception and went back to the motel to pack up and we left. I am usually always so vigilant with locking my doors, especially when I'm home alone. Just to show you, all it takes is one time to forget to check your locks and that certain unwanted guest inviting themselves in. So this happened last night. 
I'm a female, 25, and live alone in an apartment in not a very good part of my city. I was laying in bed watching Criminal Minds when the phone to the door to my apartment complex rang. It's a locked door, so visitors have to be let in. So it rang four or five times, and I wasn't expecting anyone. It was about 10 p.m., so I didn't open the door or answer the phone. I called my mom and told her I felt a bit scared. I have a history of abusive relationships and have been diagnosed with PTSD. My mom told me that it was probably just a neighbor who forgot their key or something. Then I heard the elevator come up, so I went to go look through the peephole on my door. I saw a man in dark clothes and a hoodie get out of the elevator and walk towards my door. I freak out and told my mom, who was still on the phone with me. She told me to step away from the door, so I went to my bedroom. That was when the man started pulling on the door handle and then proceeded to pound on my door. I was really freaking out at this point, whispering to my mom what was happening. She told me to go lock myself in the bathroom while she called the police on my sister's phone. The police told my mom to tell me to mute my phone and hang up the call with her so they could call me. I did and they called and told me to stay locked in the bathroom and to be quiet. At that same time, I could still hear the man trying to get in. The woman told me that they had a police on patrol only a couple minutes away. I was in full panic at that moment. After what felt like forever, the woman on the phone told me that two police officers were outside my door, so I had to get out of the bathroom and open the door for them. I was crying and hyperventilating when they entered. One of the officers stayed in my apartment for a while when the other searched the building. They never found the man. So here I am today, still freaking out of not knowing who the man was or what he wanted. I found myself at home one week at night. My parents went out of town and I was returning from a canceled sleepover at my friend's house. The lights were on when I got to the door and I remember getting a phone call from that same friend shortly thereafter, which would end up being the last normal event of that night. My brother was playing video games in the next room and I could hear him tapping furiously at the video game while I spoke on the cordless phone. I walked around in the living room and ended the phone call in the kitchen when I remember hearing some sort of high-pitched squeal that came from the house somewhere. I couldn't place where it came from as it sounded the same in every room I went to investigate. It ended about a minute after it started and was interrupted by the phone ringing. But the phone wasn't in the kitchen where I left it. It was in the bathroom on the counter in front of the sink. I answered the phone and there was no one there. So I hung up. It was at that point I heard a dragging sound. Like a large heavy object was being dragged in the attic crawl space above me. I followed the sound as it slowly navigated from room to room and ended up in my parents' bedroom, who at the time still had a water bed. After the sound made it to the far wall, it stopped and the phone rang again. And this time it was my friend on the other line. I told him what was going on and he told me to be careful and call the police. After I got off the phone, I laid down on the waterbed. I then heard a knock on the door and answered it quickly, but no one was there. It was at this point I called my brother from his room to check something out. I stormed into his room and there's nobody there. His bed was made and his room spotless. Neither the console nor the TV was on and the controller was wrapped and unplugged. There's no way he could have hid and cleaned his room in those few seconds it took me to make it to his door of his room. I had been alone the entire night, hearing for 20 minutes straight my brother playing his game that he was not present to be playing. The phone rang again, but again, it was not where I left it. This time it was resting on the kitchen counter where I originally left it. So I walked through the entire house to answer it. It was my friend calling again, this time saying that the call was dropped for some reason and he was trying to call me back. I explained to him what just happened and I heard another knock on the door. Since I was standing right next to it, I peeked through the window within two seconds of the knocks and there was nobody there. At this point I opened the door and stepped out to the porch to make sure I didn't see anyone running away as I had a large wide open yard and there's nothing to hide behind. I walked into the front yard and looked around, but couldn't find anything. I found myself engaged in several more minutes of talking to my friend before I got off the line. 
and it was at that moment where I realized that the place I had been staring at while I was talking were two very large black reflective eyes looking back at me. The figure was tall and lanky and stood about 10 feet or so from me. The most notable feature he wore was an inhumanly large smile and he was grinning with oily mechanical teeth from literally ear to ear. Despite me staring directly at him for more than five minutes, I pretended that I didn't notice him and through willpower alone, made it back inside the house without running as fast as I could. Instead, I walked calmly. I remember feeling like if I ran, he would chase me and somehow knew that he would have caught me easily. I barricaded myself in my room for the rest of the night, but did not fall asleep. The sun came up the next morning and my parents were home. Nothing like that ever happened before, and nothing like that has ever happened since. I was 12 and my older sister and I were home alone for the weekend. I was waiting for my friend to pick me up and getting restless. There was a knock on the door. Thinking it was her, I ran to the door to answer it without checking through the peephole first. A man was standing there with a clipboard and said he needed to check our gas meter. I was enwrenched in the disappointment and my friend's still not arriving yet, so I just told him, yeah sure, whatever you need to do. I didn't notice at the time, but he wasn't dressed as a city official. He had on a green and purple shirt with stripes, like the host of Blue's Clues. He came in and immediately went upstairs to where the bathrooms were and walked into the open door of my room. The typical girly girl room with pink and glitter. Thank God my sister came downstairs at that exact moment. She said, Oh, is that Daphne's dad? Why is he going upstairs? And I complained about how Daphne wasn't here and was going on about how unreliable she was when my sister cut me off. Wait, wait. If Daphne isn't here, who is that? Oh, he's here to read the gas meters. Her face turned white. She flung the door open and dragged me out, hands clamped around my protesting mouth. She said, our gas meters are outside. Neither of us had a cell phone, it being the 60s, and obviously we weren't going into the house to call authorities on the landline. Then my ever resourceful sister had a stroke of genius. A man was walking by our house and she motioned him over. She called out loudly into the house, Oh dad, it's good that you're home. A man from the city is here to read the gas meters upstairs. Just as she hoped, the man on the street said, what are you talking about? The man in the striped shirt bolted out of the house. The man on the street asked us repeatedly if we were okay and if we needed him to stay with us until our parents came home. He was very sweet. We were so startled that we barely thanked him before slamming and locking the doors and windows. As irate as my sister was that I let someone in the house, she begged me not to call the authorities because her parents left her in charge and she was worried that she would get in trouble. I didn't want her to catch any heat from my carelessness allowing some guy in. So I was on the same page. Three weeks later, a girl in our community went missing. Same MO. She was home alone and the authorities found the door open and no signs of forced entry. My sister and I discussed our options, but deep down we knew we had no choice but to come clean. We told the police everything. I don't know if it ever helped, but they did tell us they had reason to believe that it was the same man. They also tracked down the man that helped us on the street. Turns out we already knew him. He worked at the butcher shop. We just hadn't recognized him. He became a lifelong friend of the family after that. Our parents were mortified. They weren't angry with us, just glad we were okay. Though they did have to review the rules of caution and didn't leave us home alone for a while. They found the girl and said that she'd been held for a few days and then buried alive. They never caught the man, but fear not. He looked like he was in his late 30s in 1960. So in any case, he has to be dead by now. I thank God every day for my sister's resourcefulness and quick action. So I was home alone on a Tuesday. My brother was at school and my parents were at work. I was 18 at the time. I was taking a bath when I heard my dog barking. It's a pretty normal thing cause he barks when people walk by the house. And we have a big window for him to watch from. But this time his barking sounded far away. I kept listening and realized he sounded like he was outside. And I was like, okay, I definitely didn't let him outside. So I quickly put on my clothes and went to my parents' bedroom and looked out their window because it faces the backyard. My dog was actually outside. I realized that someone must have been in the house. So I quickly hid in my parents' room. And of course, my cat sees me and wants in. She is the loudest cat you'll ever hear. She's deaf, so she doesn't really know how loud she is when she meows. 
so I quickly let her in. And of course, I decided to hide in the loudest, creakiest room in the house. I didn't want to risk being seen, so I stayed. Anyways, I still wasn't 100% sure that someone was in here, because I get paranoid easily sometimes. I freeze at any sound I hear in the house when I'm home alone. Seven years prior, our house had been broken into while I was at school, which is directly across the street from where I live. I decided to call my dad on his cell phone, even though he worked farther away than my mom. I knew he would answer right away. I couldn't really call my mom because she's a teacher and schools have horrible cell service. So I called my dad and told him, I think someone's in the house. And he was like, okay, call the police. So I called the police. And at that point, I could definitely hear someone downstairs in the kitchen, opening up cupboards and stuff. The person stayed on the line with me the whole time, asking me things like my name, age, and stuff to calm me down, I guess. But by that point, my voice was getting pretty shaky. My cat was meowing her usual hello meow at me loudly, over and over, which didn't help as I was trying to hide from the intruder. So eventually the operator asked me if there should be any cars parked in the driveway. I said no. She said there's a blue Saturn with a license plate. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, that's my mother's car. By that time I heard someone downstairs yell, police. I went downstairs to see my mother and a couple of policemen looking at me. I explained that that was my mom and I didn't think she was supposed to be home. This was a Tuesday at noonish. She never comes home for lunch. She apparently had a meeting at my brother's school that day. They said to try to communicate better in the future. At least I know they can be at my house within five minutes. So yeah, that's my story. P.S. Sorry, mommy. So let's go back all the way to the mid 80s. We lived in the suburb in a close knit community, so I never had any worries. 11 year old me was home alone during summer break from school. My mom and dad both worked. So I was just chilling in the living room, blasting the stereo with the front door open. Bit of backstory. My cousin was dating a guy named Jeff. They are now married with kids. Me and him hit off instantly. He was a few years older than me, but would treat me like a little brother. So we talked shit and pestered each other quite a bit. At this time, we were fairly new in our friendship, but he would call to check up on me. The phone rings. At this time, we didn't have fancy things like cell phones or even caller ID. We had a push button phone, which we had just bought to replace the old school rotary dial phone not too long before then. The conversation goes like this. Hello? Hey, what's going on? I'm thinking, cool, it's Jeff. Nothing, just hanging around the house. Are your parents home? Jeff knew my parents worked, but maybe he thought they were off that day. No, they're both at work. Okay, so what are you wearing? This was odd, but this would be something Jeff would say to mess with me. Uh, t-shirt and shorts? Are you wearing underwear? What kind? It dawns on me. This is not Jeff. He sounded like him, but holy shit, it's not him. Who is this? David. David who? David Sanders. Who the hell is David Sanders? What do you want? Just wanted to talk to you. Yeah, I have to go. Okay, see you soon. End of the phone call. At that point my mind was racing. I had no idea what just happened. I just talked to a dude that I didn't know for five minutes and told him that my parents weren't home and what I was wearing. Wait, did he just say talk to you soon? What the hell? Okay, I've heard of prank calls before. Someone was just calling random people and screwing with them. Yeah, that's what it must have been. So for about 20 minutes or so, I'm roaming around the house with the door open blasting music, trying to shake off the call. My mind is repeating the last line, see you soon. There is no way he could have been serious, right? Okay, let's go ahead and shut and lock the door, just to be sure. Three minutes later, I walk to the front door and without opening it, I ask through the door, who is it? He replies, it's David. No effing way. I step to the window by the door and peek out. Sure enough, there's this guy in his mid-twenties looking back at me, smiling, and he gives me a quick wave. I can't believe this is happening. This cannot be happening. What do you want? Just wanted to hang out with you. My mind is blank. What do I say? What do I do? Uh, my dad is home. He's in the bathroom. What the hell? That's the best I could come up with? Oh, okay. Bye. No way this can be that easy. Nope. I see the doorknob turn. This creep is trying to get in. Luckily it's locked. 
I wait a few seconds and look out the window. No one's there. Wait, what was that? I hear someone in the bushes right in front of the bathroom. I run in there and this guy's standing, trying to open the window. He tries the next one and is locked as well. Adult me would have called 911 as soon as he showed up and talked to him through the door until the police showed up. But 11 year old me, I called my mom. After that, my parents set up a system. They would call, let it ring, hang up, and then call again. And of course, I don't leave the door open anymore. I never heard from David again, though when I was older, I'm sure I would have liked to and explained to him why he shouldn't be trying to pick up young boys. We rent a house in a gated community type setting, just without an actual gate. You aren't allowed to solicit services of any kind in this community. That's largely because it's in a pretty not great area of town and several robberies took place via assholes pretending to sell shit. Anyway, I work the second shift so I sleep in the early mornings before work. My roommate crept into my room one morning around 11 a.m. and whispered, don't answer the door, someone's out there. So I went to go check. A fairly large man was banging on my door and trying to knob rather aggressively before running to our neighbor's house and doing the same thing. Then came back to our door like he was trying to force his way inside. He wasn't wearing a uniform. I yelled out that there was no soliciting and to go away. Bad move on my part because it just enraged the man who then went fucking unhinged standing in the road screaming. I just want to talk. Open up. Open the fucking door. I want to talk. He was running around and trying even harder to get into my house and the neighbors. I then noticed a gold colored car parked in the middle of the road, blocking the entrance of vehicles coming and going. It was extremely out of place. The driver had a hoodie pulled over his face and was slumping down in the sea. I took my roommate to her room and we locked the door and called the police, who were quick to send officers our way. The entire time we waited for them, the angry man kept knocking at the door going around to the windows and trying doorknobs of our house and our neighbors while screaming that he just wanted to talk. As soon as the squad cars came, the angry man jumped into the gold car. The officers spoke for a while, out of earshot, then they followed the gold car out of the housing area. The other officer told us that the men claimed to be with the energy company. They were able to produce a business card and were issued some kind of warning about not coming back. We were told to call immediately if the men returned and urged not to answer the door for anyone we didn't know. I don't know what those men were up to, but we're certainly not selling cost efficient energy. The license plate on the car that drove up was from New York. I don't live anywhere near New York. So my husband, Ted, is in the military. We have generally lived on base every station we've been to because the surrounding towns can be crime ridden and sketchy. And with my husband being gone most of the time, the extra security is appreciated. I work from home due to us moving so often. So one afternoon, I was taking a break. I had made a bite to eat and was snuggling up on the couch with my dog. That's when I heard the sliding glass door open. It was so nonchalant that I thought it was Ted. I saw my cat run from the kitchen and the shadow standing next to the door entering it. I thought maybe he had come back for something so I called out to him and was like, what are you doing home? Did you forget something? No answer. This is where I got an eerie feeling. After I asked what he was doing here, I saw the shadow move and heard the click of the sliding door lock. From there, he walked into the laundry room and shut the door. I had still received no response. So I'm sitting on the couch, scared out of my mind. I call my husband, hoping to hear his phone ring in the laundry room. I don't hear a ring, but he answers. I asked him why he came home and didn't answer me, and all he says is, That wasn't me. Grab the dog and get into the car. I freaked out. After getting off the phone with Ted, I grab my dog and run to my car. From there, I call the military police. Waiting for them was probably the longest 20 minutes of my life. When they got there, they cleared the house and found no one. They asked me to make a statement, and even they were baffled that someone would try this on base. We still live there, and I'm so scared that he'll come back. So I grew up in Las Vegas. I had moved there when I was in second grade, 
and I was around seven or so. My mother was working at a motorcycle repair shop in Arizona, and that just wasn't paying the bills at all. So she jumped at the offer of a new job, of course. Fast forward about five years. I'm in middle school now. My brother and I were almost two years apart. I was about to turn 12, so he was about 10 at the time. My mother, being quite low on the seniority list, was forced to work late nights. This left me and my brother home alone, after school, more often than not. Our nights were pretty uneventful, usually consisted of avoiding whatever homework we were assigned, warming up leftovers in the microwave, and watching whatever sparked our interest on TV, which was usually WWE wrestling, or some kind of cartoon. We usually ended up in bed before our mom got home, but occasionally we'd wait up for her. One night, or I suppose one afternoon, considering it was still broad daylight, everything was pretty normal. My brother sat on the living room floor, engulfed on whatever was on TV, and I was using my mom's desktop computer, feeding my virtual pets. Then there was a rather aggressive knock at the door, which was very odd. I was sort of an outcast child, I didn't really have too many friends, nor did my brother. Even then, we lived in what you consider a senior living community. My mom was the youngest adult there and was around her mid-30s. My brother, being too short to reach the peephole, doesn't move, only slightly reacts and looks at me. I get up from the computer chair and make my way to the front door to glance out the peephole. I see a man in a black ski mask staring back at me through the peephole. It definitely didn't seem real. It sort of seemed like something from a cliche movie, as if he was dressed to rob a bank. I was immediately scared shitless, and I obviously didn't bother to ask who it was. I slightly stepped away, shut the TV off, grabbed my brother and our small black Pomeranian and ran towards my bedroom. Once we were safely hidden in my closet, I informed him of what I saw outside. He didn't say much, but he was visibly shooken up and just quietly standing there holding our dog. I slid the teeny flip phone my mom left for us for emergencies out of my pocket and dialed 911. I whispered to the operator the whole call as the man hadn't left since the knocks persisted after we left the living room. Somehow she understood me and sent an officer over. Immediately after the call ended with the operator, I dialed our mom. I explained everything to her. She ended up leaving work and headed home around the same time the police had. I'm not sure what deterred him from pursuing further, but of course, the man was gone by the time they both arrived. The officer was clearly not taking any of it seriously, most likely thinking these young boys were just paranoid staying home alone. It was probably just a young man playing a joke on his friend, he explained. However, like I stated, we lived in a senior living center. Who could possibly be playing a joke on? His dear grandma? He then gave us both stickers, as if that would console our nerves, after seeing a masked man pounding hard on our door. Fortunately, I never saw that stranger again, and after that experience, my house, however, had been broken into, as well as my car, three times. Thankfully, none of us were present when any of those took place. Since then, my family has moved out of state and installed a security system. One night when I was 12 or 13, my parents were gone for a while and I was staying up really late on my desktop computer waiting for them to come home. Like most people, I had been told a million times not to talk to strangers on the internet, but about half of my friends list on MSN were people I had never met before. So I was just chatting with a bunch of them. Out of nowhere, one of my online friends told me exactly what I've been doing for the past hour or two. What I was eating, drinking, playing with, and when I had gotten up last. Things I had not mentioned in the chat. I instantly got a horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach. My desktop was set up in the front of a big window. So as far as I knew, this person I had been talking to that had supposedly lived in a different country had found my address and been watching me through the window. I was scared and alone. Turns out he just hacked into my webcam. I always left it plugged in and had been warned not to do so and had been frequently watching me through it whenever he wanted. It's been 10 years and I still have all the cameras and devices covered with duct tape. I was listening to one of those creepy narrators who narrates let's not meet stories and one of the stories reminded me of a really scary encounter that I had when I was 13. My parents divorced when I was in the 8th grade, and after my dad had moved out, my mom was very single and ready to mingle, so she often left me home alone. I usually have someone stay the night on those nights that I knew my mom wasn't coming home, so that I wasn't totally alone. So one night, my friend and I, 
who I'll call Jess for this story, was staying the night. And for some reason we had the best internet connection in the garage. So we were just messing around on MySpace and such when we start hearing what sounded like two people talking. Jess and I stopped talking and we're trying to hear what the people were saying. We got up and stood by the garage door, but still couldn't make it out. So I went inside and looked through the peephole on my front door. There were two men standing there in the driveway by my garage looking around. I immediately freaked out because they weren't standing on the sidewalk or anything. They were standing by my garage like they lived at my house. I stood there watching for a minute before one of them started walking up to the door. I quickly and very quietly checked to make sure both locks were locked, then looked back up at the peephole. The man was leaning over the side railing on the porch trying to look into my mother's bedroom window. I instantly signaled to Jess to go get knives and be super quiet. I looked back outside and the two men were back talking by the garage. Jesse asked what had happened and I just told her to make sure all the doors were locked while I kept watch. She came back quickly and we switched. She kept watching while I looked for the house phone. This was before it was normal for teens to have cell phones. All of a sudden she says, they're leaving. My heart sank because something in my gut told me that they weren't. Without even thinking, I asked her, did you lock the side door in the garage? And she said she didn't. I took off through the kitchen into the garage just as I heard our side gate open. I made it to the door and locked the deadbolt. Before I could get the doorknob locked, the doorknob twisted. I thought I was gonna puke. I grabbed the handle and locked it before running back inside. I ran to the back door at that point and started yelling, lock the windows. My back door had sheer curtains over them, but you could still sort of see inside and outside. And before I was able to make it to lock the door, I saw someone walking to the back porch. I jumped behind the couch and watched Jesse try to open the back door before the second guy followed. Jesse came walking in the living room and I grabbed her and pulled her down behind the couch with me. We both sat there in silence, terrified, watching these two guys to try to figure out how to get in. I started to cry and Jesse was just sitting there, shaking. After what seemed like forever, they walked off the back porch and into the backyard. We heard them banging around before we saw them walk by the porch again and out the side gate. I ran into the front and looked through the people and saw them walking across the street and get into a car. I told Jesse they were gone. We both burst into tears and started hugging each other. We called her aunt and she came to pick us up and took her to her house and we stayed there that night. We never told anyone else because we thought we'd be in trouble for some reason. But after that, I didn't stay home alone for years. And even at 25, I still get scared when it's just my daughter and I home alone and my husband is at work or at the rare occasion when he goes out with friends. We were lucky it didn't end worse than it did, but I'm still scared from it 12 years later. A few years ago, two of my good friends, females in their 20s, lived together in an apartment building that looked at an identical building across a small courtyard. A new guy had moved into the apartment across from them and he was unpacking and cleaning, completely naked, with the blinds open. They were on the balcony and noticed this. He saw them looking and smiled. They waved and had a laugh and promptly went inside. Note, the apartment layout, the front door opened into the living room and the bedrooms were to the right of the living room. A few minutes later, they hear a knock on their door. Friend one looks through the peephole and it's the guy. He had actually figured out which apartment was theirs and came over. He was wearing clothes at this point. Friend one runs to friend two's room and says, what the fuck, that guy is at the door. He knocks again, then starts jiggling the door handle and they remember that the door was unlocked. Scared now, friend one says she's gonna run to lock the door. Right as she runs out there, they hear the door jiggle and the door open. The guy yells, hello, into the apartment. They instinctively crouch down on the side of the bed that was blocked from the living room's view and hide but they didn't have time to close the bedroom door. They clearly hear him walk through the apartment and walk around the living room, then back out the front door. A few seconds go by and they work up the courage to peek into the living room. Nobody's there. Then he knocks again. Knowing that he's out of the apartment, friend one runs and locks the doors as fast as she could. When he hears the sound of the lock, he yells through the door, I know you're in there. He knocks and jiggles the door handle for another minute or so straight as they contemplated what to do, but he eventually leaves. 
Honestly, this sounds scarier typing it out, and I think we underreacted. They were embarrassed about the whole situation, so they didn't want to call the police or management, but they did stay at my place that night. Luckily, there were no more further issues. I was sitting in our living room, watching TV one night when no one else was home. In the kitchen, we have a refrigerator that has dual doors to open and a lot of decorations all over it, including a small magnet chime thing. I'm sitting there when I hear the chimes ringing slightly, so I mute the TV and listen, thinking maybe my family member was home. Nothing happened, so I turned the volume back up and kept watching TV. A minute later, I hear the sound of someone sneezing in our kitchen, and it didn't sound like any of my family members. I tense up and thought someone had broken into my home. I'm shaking at this point, and I'm being quiet and listening. A few moments go by, and I hear the refrigerator door open, and then slam shut so hard that I could hear the glass jars rattling. I ran into the kitchen, ready to whoop someone's ass, and there was nothing. I told my family about it, and they just said I was paranoid. But we've had guests come over to the house and say it feels weird in there. I was home alone when I was like 9 or 10, whichever you are in 5th grade. It was literally the second day that my mother allowed me to just walk home from school rather than stay in the after school program. The phone rings, voice on the other end asks for David. I tell them sorry, wrong number. As a weird but relevant aside, we got consistent wrong numbers when I was a kid because our home phone line was one digit off from h &R Block, the tax prep service. So I had developed a sort of standard cadence to wrong number calls. It almost went, h &R Block? Sorry, wrong number. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. So I'm on the line waiting for him to say, oh, I'm sorry. Instead, he starts yelling at me saying that he needs to speak to David and he knows that David's there. I tell him that I have two Uncle Davids, but neither of them are there. The guy starts cursing and ranting in what, in hindsight, was pretty clearly driven by meth. So I'm already pretty spooked, having never really encountered a full crazy person in my life. And then he starts describing my house. He starts telling me that it's white with brick pillars on the green porch, red doors, and there's a white dog in the backyard. He concludes the call with, I know you're lying and I'm gonna come get your ass. In the next 30 seconds, I rush to get a knife from the kitchen, call my mom, and look frantically out the front of the house. Then there's banging, kicking at the door. I screamed at a pitch I didn't realize I could and ran into the bathroom that had the only locking door and stayed there till my mom got home. When I heard the garage open and my mom call out for me, I started sobbing and ran to her with the knife in hand. When I got older, I found out from my mom that Uncle David, the guy I was looking for, was a pretty bad drug addict for years, and that's why I hardly ever saw him. He probably gave someone he owed money to a bad address slash number. Thanks, Uncle David. Seven-year-old me was playing with a doll that I got for my birthday in the doorway of my apartment on the third floor of a three-story building. My dad was outside in the parking lot working on his car, as he often did, and me playing in the hall was pretty common as I had friends who lived directly across from me who I was waiting for to come home and play with. It was the 80s, so being unsupervised was more acceptable. Suddenly, this man I'd never seen before walked up the stairs and approached me, asking where my parents were. I told him my dad was outside in the parking lot and my mom was at work. I assumed it was a friend of my sister's who was in her 20s as he looked the same age. He said he couldn't just leave me alone and picked me up and threw me over his shoulder. I figured he was overreacting and taking me to my dad, but he made his way to the opposite door from the parking lot towards the side street where his car was. Just then, my dad turned the corner, as he just happened to have gone over to the other side to secretly smoke a joint, and asked the guy what was going on. The guy put me down and said something about thinking I needed help, and took off. My dad being stoned didn't really react beyond what the fuck, okay. Kidnapping attempt foiled. My sister didn't know him, and she was living with her boyfriend in another city.
I was home alone one night in middle school. I was in my room, which was right above our kitchen, and I was watching TV. I had already shut the lights off downstairs because I eventually was going to fall asleep and didn't want to get yelled at for leaving them on. So I'm laying there in my bed, and the family dog, a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, was laying next to me when I hear the cabinet doors open and shut. It wasn't like they all opened at once and then shut. It was more like one shut after another for a few seconds. I froze and looked at my dog, who at this point was an old lady. She was perked up and looked at me. I peeked outside the window that overlooks the driveway and didn't see anything. Now I didn't think anyone was in the house because while our dog was lazy, she was a great guard dog and she would have responded to the door or whatever. So after a few seconds, the dog gets up and starts moving towards the stairs and I decided to fully follow, confident that if anyone was down there, she would scare them. I grab my softball bat and my cell phone and follow her downstairs. As we come downstairs, I notice the lights are on in the kitchen and I dial 911 because I know I shut the lights off prior to going upstairs. When we get to the kitchen, the cabinet doors were all open, which was obviously not how I left it. That's why I noticed that the door was still locked, so I thought whoever did this was still in the house. So I quickly run upstairs to my parents' closet and called my parents and told them what's up. They came home and obviously didn't find any trace of anyone being in the house. We still don't know why the lights were on and the cabinet doors were open, but we did have some other paranormal-like occurrences happen around that time, so we chalked it up to a household ghost. I rented a cheap bi-level duplex in a bad neighborhood for about three and a half years so that I could save up money to buy a house. First thing I did after unpacking for moving in was bolster the security. I changed the deadbolt on the front door and installed a locking doorknob in place of the crusty non-locking one that was there. All the windows were old, shitty, aluminum slider style windows with horrible locks and the back door was a patio door going straight onto the deck. So I bought some hardwood, 1x4s and 2x4s, and cut pieces to put in the windows and door tracks so that any potential intruders would have to break the window rather than simply opening them to gain entry. I'm convinced that the past tenant was a drug dealer. In the first six months, I had four separate instances of tweakers knocking on my door looking for Sam. A couple of tweakers stepped off when I told them that nobody named Sam lived there. Two others got worked up asked where Sam had gone and where was he living, which I responded that I rented this place and had no idea who Sam is. After being visited by these tweakers, I doubled my efforts to ensure that all doors were locked at all times. I still forgot to lock the door once in a while and had a very creepy experience one night after forgetting to lock it. I was in the middle of cooking dinner one dark evening and went to the washroom. After washing my hands, I exited the washroom and came back into the kitchen to see a middle-aged Asian man dressed in all black coming up the stairs from the entrance into my kitchen. Who the hell are you? I asked, startling him. He said he was there to fix the toilet. I was sure I was going to die, but figured I ought to talk to the guy for a few seconds before lunging for a kitchen knife and trying to fight for my life. The guy explained that the landlord, Gary, had sent him to fix the toilet. I told him that Gary wasn't my landlord and my toilet was working fine. He asked for the address he was at. I gave him the address and he started to apologize profusely, saying he had the wrong address. He backed down the stairs cautiously, put his boots on, and sheepishly left the duplex. I'm still not sure if he was looking for Sam to square up some unpaid drug debts and left when he realized Sam wasn't there. If he was looking for a woman to prey on, found me instead and had reconsidered his insidious plan or if he was really some poor sap who walked into a stranger's house while on a mission to fix a toilet for Gary but I never mistakenly left the door at that place unlocked again. So this happened about an hour or two ago and I'm pretty freaked out. I'm a 24 year old female. So I have a Wi-Fi enabled baby monitor in my bedroom so I can watch my son when he's sleeping and in his bassinet while my husband and I are downstairs. I tend to be nude in my bedroom in the second story of my house as I don't have central air and it's summer in Wisconsin 
Today is currently over 80 degrees. I was laying in bed, drinking a beer and watching TV, when I noticed a light blinking on the baby monitor, which was currently facing towards the bed. As my son had been in a co-sleeper on the bed with my husband last night, since I worked night shifts in the hospital. For our monitor, a light blinking on it means that someone is watching via a website or app for the monitor. I jokingly sent a text to my husband, he is at work at this time, calling him a creeper and I was flipping off the camera and talking to it. But I found it odd that it took him several minutes to read my message. When he responded, I could say the cliche that my blood ran cold, but that would be embellishing. He said he hadn't opened the app in the camera in weeks and he definitely wasn't the one watching and advised me that I should unplug the camera, which I did. I don't know who was watching me or how they could have got the login information for the monitor, but creepy person watching me through the baby monitor, let's never meet again. <laughs>